Good evening. We're so glad that you're joining us tonight. It's such a pleasure to be able to gather in this way and to be able to draw from God's Word. So we're glad that you're joining us tonight. We're going to continue our study tonight in Mark chapter 10, starting here in verse 17 in a second. Uh, but before we do that, we ask you, wherever you may be, if you just stop for a second, if you would bow your heads and join us in prayer as we take this study to the Lord tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you tonight. Thank you for the time we had this morning, but thank you also for the time and those that are gathering tonight in their homes and being part of this study. We just ask, Lord, that you would bless this study. May your hand be upon it. May your hand be upon the words that we read tonight, these texts. May you breathe into our lives. Find us where we are. Speak to us. Uh, and may we leave this study tonight knowing how much that we love you or that you love us and that we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. So tonight, we're going to pick up, like we said, where we left off here. We're in Mark chapter 10. And last week, we talked about when, when Jesus and the children gathered, the, the children came to Jesus, and he, he told the disciples and kind of rebuked them uh, not to hold the children back. And he, he likened the kingdom of God to the little children and how that we had to come in faith like a childlike faith and understanding um, of Christ and, and our salvation. And we're going to kind of on that same mindset, pick up right from there. We'll be here in Mark chapter 10, and we're starting in verse 17. So if you have your Bibles, we would love for you to read along. Um, if you don't have your Bibles with you, the words will be on the screen as we do always. Uh, we just ask that you follow along as we read. So Mark chapter 10, starting in verse 17. Mark writes this. He says, Now as he was going out on the road, he came... One came running, knelt before him, and asked him, Good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that is God. You know thy commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your father and your mother. And he answered and said to him, Teacher, all these things I have kept for my youth. Then Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, One thing you lack. Go your way, sell whatever you have, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come take up the cross and follow me. But he was sad at this word, and went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus answered again and said to them, Children, how hard is it for those who trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And they were greatly astonished, saying amongst themselves, Who then can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said, With men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God all things are possible." Then Peter began to say to him, See, we have left all and followed you. So Jesus answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time. Houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with possessions and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last first. So tonight, several verses there that we've read, and as we look at this tonight, there's a few things that we want to pull out. We don't, we don't want to lengthen this study more than, than we need to be, and we could spend a lot of time in this, um, but I really want to get straight to the point of what Christ is addressing and what he's talking here. 
Um, as we've mentioned from week to week, as we've studied uh, through these, these chapters in Mark, uh, we've come to the point in chapter 9 and chapter 10 that Christ has turned his direction uh, to a downward descend down to Jerusalem, where he would spend uh, his last Passover there. He would be crucified, put to death, and risen on the third day. He has predicted his death the first time in Mark chapter 8, the second time in Mark chapter 9, and here before we close out Mark chapter 10, uh, we'll see that he'll predict his death again. And, and as we're reading through this chapter and reading through these chapters, we see Christ having these interactions with the disciples and the multitudes and the crowds and even the Jewish leaders uh, of talking about heaven, talking about what it means to enter into heaven, what it means to be saved, and, and, and all of this. And, and these discussions continue to get more and more in-depth. As we've talked all this summer, as we've studied through the, the Gospel of Mark, we see that the disciples and, and their growing and their knowledge um, and the faith that they have continue to grow. They struggled with understanding. They struggled with their faith. And we see that they continue to grow. And this was no different. Um, the story that we read that they were still growing their faith, growing in understanding what Christ was going to do on the cross, growing what it means to have a heavenly kingdom and be a part of God's kingdom versus part of this earthly kingdom. And so this this theme that we've talked about, in reality, we've talked about it from week to week to week. If you've been part of our study, um, what we've read tonight in a way is nothing new in the discussions and some of the words that Christ spoke. Uh, he just may have approached them in a different manner, and it may have been a different person that came and asked him a little bit different of a question. But but we, this theme of the disciples' faith um, and understanding of understanding what it means to have eternal life um, and to be saved, he's continued continued Christ uh, being as continued in this teaching manner to his disciples and those as followed. So here in, in these, these verses we read tonight, we see that there's this rich young man. So imagine this, this young man that for whatever reason ha has a lot of wealth, whether he had inherited it or whether he did something great that, that caused him to have riches. Um, he has this wealth. He's a, a Jewish man because he knows and he follows the, the law of the Old Testament, the law of Moses. And he's approached Christ, and he's asking him what he should do. He said, good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And so he's acknowledging that Christ is a, a teacher, uh, that he's looking at him, and he's looking at him and saying, what do I need to do? Um, now, this, this story of this rich man speaking to Christ um, is also found in Matthew chapter 19 as well as Luke chapter 18. Uh, so a total of three times in the four Gospels. We're reading here the third time in Mark chapter 10 um, of this, this event that was being recorded. Um, and as we look at these different events, we kind of understand what this rich young man was asking. He was basically looking in a way um, of what type of works what kind of maybe things that he could buy his way into heaven? What could he do materialistic-wise? What could he do work-wise to inherit the kingdom of heaven? What we know as Christians, what the Word of God tells us, um, is, is there's nothing we can do, not even our righteousness. The Bible talks about our, our righteousness is like filthy rags. There's not a thing we can do personally to inherit the kingdom of God. Uh, the fact is, Scripture is clear that the only way to achieve eternal life, the only way to God the Father, as Christ said, is through Him. We must go through Jesus Christ. We must accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We must ask and seek forgiveness of our sins and look to Him as being the one to be able to find redemption of our sins to make it to, in heaven, to heaven and have eternal life. And, and so what Christ is addressing here is the fact that that we cannot buy our way into heaven. There's not enough good works or anything we can do materialistic-wise or, or, or physical-wise we could do on earth to earn our way into heaven. It's all about accepting Jesus Christ. It's not about what we can do or have done. It's all about what Christ has done on the Christ cross. So with that mindset, looking at this, let's look at Christ's answers back to him. <clears throat> he says, Why do you call me good? No one is good, but that that is God. Now, don't misread what Christ is saying. Christ is not saying he is he is not good because he is good. Christ is good, and, and Christ is not saying that he is God because he is not God because Christ is God. He is Emmanuel, God with us, and Christ was fully human. Um, he was divine, but he was also fully God, and Christ was God. 
But what Christ is saying here addressing this is he, in a way, was looking at himself being good. The, the young rich man, he was good. He's following the commandments and he looked at he's done all of these things since he was young. When we read this um, in Matthew and Luke, this, this event that's recorded, we see that he's saying that he's done all of these good things since he was young. And so now what can he do to inherit eternal life? And so Christ is addressing that as no man is good. Only God is good. There's not one of us ever that has lived on the face of the earth that is sinless, that is spotless, that's had no sin in our life. Not one of us is purely good. We have all done wrong. We have all fell short of the glory of the God, as the scripture says. And we all need Christ to find forgiveness. And so Christ is bringing this up to this young man, saying that there is no one good except for, as we know, Jesus Christ. He was the only one that was sinless. That He was the only one that was good. He's the only one that was capable of going to the cross and shedding his blood to forgiveness of our sins because no one else was able to do that but him, Jesus Christ, who was divine, lived as a human and went through life sinless as a spotless lamb and took on that sacrifice for us. And so as we look at this here, Christ then asks, he says, he talks about the commandments and, and do you not understand them? Do you not follow them? Um, he talks about not stealing and not murdering and honor thy father and thy mother and not bearing false witness. And he talks about all of these. And the young man says in verse 20, and he answered and said to him, teacher, all these things I have kept from my youth, all my life, ever since I was young and I've learned these things, I have done these things. Now let's stop for a second. We are living in a world that seems to reject um, the moral the moral aspect of the Word of God. They they seem to reject even the Ten Commandments. Right now, there's a battle if if courthouses can have the Ten Commandments on the lawn. There's a battle about having God and talking about God within our government and within our society and within our schools. And there's this battle and there's this struggle. Here we have a man that followed the Ten Commandments, he said, all of his life. Ever since he was young, he's followed them. He's, he's accepted them into his heart. And so in today's standard, if we look at that and we say, we have a man that, that has followed these Christian, these biblical principles, we say biblical principles, all of his life, you would think that, that, that he exemplifies uh, on what the Bible is saying that we should live our life by. And so Christ is asking me, have you done all of these things? And he says, yes. But he goes on and he says, and Christ looked at him and loved him. Now, I want to circle back to the fact that he loved him. But keep this in mind here. Christ, it says, Mark writes that Christ looked at him and loved him. And he said, one thing, uh, one thing you lack, go your way, sell whatever you have and give to the poor and you will have treasures in heaven and come take up the cross and follow me. Now, what he's saying there is Christ is a, a going back to kind of the Mosaic law, the fact that we should love others as we love ourselves. Even Christ said these words when he was asked what was the greatest commandment of the law. And he said that, the, that, that we should love our Lord, our God, with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and we should love others as ourselves. And he says all the laws on the prophets hang upon these two things, loving God and loving others. And that's exactly, if you want to sum up the Ten Commandments, if you want to sum up all the, the writings in the scriptures of the Old Testament, it's all about loving God and loving others as ourselves. And so here he looks, he says, Christ tells him, he says, go your way, sell your possessions, give them to the poor, come and follow me, and you'll have great wealth in heaven. Well, we see what happens here in verse 22. He says, but he, this is the young man, was sad that this word, um, and went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. And so this young man saw that his possessions were good. He saw that God gave him these possessions. This was this mindset in, in the culture at the time. If you had choose, uh, achieved greatness in society, if you had lots of possessions, it's because you found favor in God, and God, God loved you, and God gave you all of these things. And so he thought, and he saw that he had all of these things, because God loved him and blessed him, and he's got to, God has got to love him and bless him into heaven. But Christ challenges him. He says, love others as yourself. Self, uh, God has blessed you to be a blessing. Take what God has given you and go from there and be a blessing with others. That's exactly what Christ is turning around and telling to him. And the young man walks away sorrowful with his head down and he leaves. 
And what we see in this story is this young man struggled with the fact of selling the possessions that he had, giving away with the things that he had. There was this mindset in that culture that just as well as today, that we have to so much take care of ourselves. And, and, and I say this, don't take me wrong. We, we need to provide for ourselves. God has provided opportunities for us to have jobs or for us to be ed- educated or have certain talents to do things, uh, to provide for ourselves and our families. And, and all of that is important. All of that is great. I mean, the Bible even talks about that if you don't work, you don't eat, that it's important for us to take care of ourselves and to, and to do these things. But we should also love others as ourselves. And that's where this young man struggled. He he struggled with the fact that he put so much focus uh, on God's blessing me, so it's okay to have all of this stuff. You see, this stuff we can't take with us when we die. The the stuff that we we have on earth, whether we inherit it, whether we we think we earn it by by doing things in life and and having great riches, all this stuff... um, as the Bible says, that that, that rust and, and fire and all this stuff it can destroy it. But the Bible tells us to store up our treasures in heaven where rust does not destroy and, and things cannot be stolen because we should have our focus on heaven above and not things here of this world. This man struggled with that and having that understanding. Now, one thing I want to circle back. Remember the fact that, that Mark writes that Christ looked at him and loved him. Now, this should be a continuization, and I want to bring this forward, and I brought this, I hopefully, uh, to light in previous Bible studies, is that Christ looked at this man. He knew his heart. He knew that he loved God. He knew the fact that he was keeping the commandments, and he loved him. He loved him for the fact that here he was reaching out to find understanding, but he just had a hard time fully seeing the full picture. Now, Relate this to our previous Bible studies. The disciples from week after week after week, they struggled in understanding what Christ was trying to get across. They struggled in seeing how how God delivered them when they went out on these missionary journeys and God provided for them with food and clothing and and shelter. And then as soon as they find themselves in another spot down the road, then they they want to focus on not having enough food. And Christ says, have you not forgotten what what God has done for you in the past? God will continue to bless you. Look for our uh, our needs in life. Look to him for he will take care of your needs. And so with all of these studies, no matter what it was that, that folks had a struggle with, God continued to bless, but Christ continued to look at them in eyes of love. That is the same way that he looks at us today. He looks at us in eyes of love. Even though sometimes we mess up, even though we may have a hard time understanding and figure out things in life. Let's all be honest. Life is hard. Life is difficult. It's difficult to live life right now in the middle of a pandemic. It's difficult of raising children. It's difficult at, at times of, of, of following the word of God in the essence when the, when the community and those around us, uh, it's not popular always to be a Christian. Uh, it's hard sometimes to go through life and to continue to love your neighbor as yourself when they may not be so loving towards you. So things are challenging in life. Satan is out there tempting us, and things are hard, but know and understand that God loves you and I today. Just like Christ looked at him with eyes of love, no matter when we make mistakes, and no matter when we just don't see things very clear, that God is willing to open up our eyes if we're just willing to ask and seek after him. Uh, I hope you can pull that out of this message, or or this Bible study, and the message that, that Christ was trying to get across out of this, is the fact that, that, that we need to come to Christ, we need to dig into the Lord's word as we're doing tonight to try to understand more in-depthly what it means to be a Christian and to live a life for him. There's not a thing we can do on earth, and that doesn't mean that, that we have to achieve certain a level of biblical knowledge in order to make it to heaven, because Christ is clear that all we have to do is accept him Accept God's Son in our heart, and we can have eternal life. There's not any amount of works, any amount of good deeds, anything that we can do in life to inherit eternal life. Let's continue on very quickly. I'll I'll try to sum this up. After he, as we see here, after he, Christ had this words with the, this young rich man, 
He turned to his disciples, and the disciples were kind of astonished. They could not understand what he was saying. As I've already mentioned, in culture and society at the time, if you had great wealth, they saw this as a blessing from God, and the only way you achieve that is because God has blessed you. So they didn't see anything wrong with keeping your possessions because God blessed you with them. That was their mindset with that time in hand. Kind of familiar with our society today. There, that's, that's a similar mindset in the fact that, that it's how much can we possess ourselves. So when the, the disciples heard this at first, uh, let's look at this. It says, and they were greatly astonished, saying amongst themselves, then who can be saved? If, if we're not seeing the favor of God by the fact that, that someone can have great possessions, if that's not the favor of God, how can we obtain the favor of God to have eternal life? How can we have the, the favor of God to be saved? And Christ has said, you're looking at this all the wrong way. You look at this that there's not anything that you can do yourself to be saved. All you have to do is accept Jesus Christ. It's this continuization that we've talked about week to week, what it means like to be part of this heavenly kingdom that, that God is preparing for us, that all we have to do is accept Jesus Christ in our heart. So then Christ goes on and says, okay, he, he's going to, to put this into more uh, to more words into a bigger picture. First of all, he says, with man it is impossible, but not with God. For God, all things is possible. And what he's saying, with man is impossible to achieve eternal life. With man, it's impossible for us to do anything within ourselves and our works to find forgiveness. It's only by God that we can provide forgiveness. That is why that God had his had to send his son to die because mankind couldn't have and couldn't offer ourselves forgiveness. It was only through God's son that we can find forgiveness and have eternal life and spend eternity with him in heaven. But then he goes on because it says that Peter began to ask him, this being Christ that Peter was asking, see, we have left everything and followed you. <clears throat> now I look at this and I kind of found this funny because just a verse before they were astonished. They're like, wait a minute. I don't understand that. Who can be saved then? I don't understand this Christ. They're so confused. And then when Christ kind of puts this into light that you got to sell all your possessions and follow me. And, and, and by that, you, you know, you're putting others first. You're putting God first. Then, then now Peter's kind of got in the point of pride here. He's like, hey, Christ, now think about us. We have sold everything we've had. You know, Peter's now talking about them again. It, it kind of goes back into the last chapter, chapter 9, when we talked about when they were arguing who was going to be the greatest uh, in Christ's kingdom because they were saying, who is, is Christ the closest to? Who's going to be the greatest? Here, once again, Peter's like, what about us? We've left everything we've had to follow you. Now, Christ does put in here, he says, Assuredly, I say to you, <coughs> he says, that no man who have left house or brother or sister or mother or, mother or father or, or children um, or a wife that has done that, that God is not going to reward them. He says a hundredfold. Now what Christ is saying as we bring this to a close, as Christ is ta talking here, he's saying that if we focused on earthly things, we're going to get an earthly result. And when we look at an earthly result, things never end well. Fires happen. Possessions get stolen. Everything we focus on earth uh, in this broken world ends up with broken results. The only way that we can do to receive a heavenly spiritual reward is to focus on heavenly and spiritual things. And that is by putting our tra trust and faith in Jesus Christ. It's not putting our trust and faith in possessions or anybody else in this life. It's only through Jesus Christ to put our trust and our faith in possession. And what Christ is saying here is that if we put him first, that we are storing up our treasures in heaven and that we will be rewarded so much more than what we can even fathom here on earth. The Bible says that God, Christ says this, that I'm preparing, I'm going to prepare a place for you so I can come to, to get you and to receive you unto myself. He is building a kingdom in heaven. He is building a heaven where we can spend eternity with him. You know, the amount of people that on this earth by, by, by a minor scale that would ever live in a, a mansion full of gold. But it doesn't take anything here on earth to be able to have eternal life with a mansion of, full of gold except to ask Christ in our heart. Just by that, we see that our reward is tenfold. We see that even through scripture. We see that by the obedience of God and the following God on whatever he asks us to do, that, that our, our reward is so much greater. Now, I say this tonight. 
I say this tonight that it doesn't matter what type of car you drive. It doesn't matter what home you live in. It doesn't matter what type of clothes that you dress in. It doesn't matter your education. It doesn't matter your past. It doesn't matter how well that you could speak and, and, and what kind of uh, words that you say. It doesn't matter what type of family that you've come from. All that matters in life is that if you've trusted in Jesus Christ, accept him in your heart. I've said this again and again tonight, and this is exactly what the Word of God says and exactly what Christ is trying to get across to them in this chapter tonight. The things that, that this world looks so much upon, the things that we focus so much of our time and our energy and our resources for, means nothing in life. Nothing in life will matter if we don't put our full and trust in Jesus Christ. Let's do that tonight. If you've not accepted Jesus Christ in your heart, I've, I want to invite you to do so tonight. My email and my phone number is here on the screen. We, we want to reach out to you tonight. Uh, we would love for you to be able to call right where you're at tonight, to email me or text me. I'm available tonight uh, to, to speak to you to, so that you can be able to know and understand and ask for forgiveness. It's not really hard. Even a child can do it. We talked about it last week. It's easy as ABCs. Ask, believe, and confess. Ask Christ in your heart. Believe that he's died upon the cross and confess that we're a sinner and that he can save us by accepting him in our heart. It's that easy. It's that simple. But we would love to be able to talk to you. If you would like to, to know more about that, um, if you'd like to know more scripture, we'd love to be able to share with you. Um, no matter what you're facing tonight, we would love to be able to pray for you. And we're going to do that here tonight. Um, but we ask that you just reach out to, to us. We are praying for you. We've been praying for these studies from week to week. Uh, we know that there's many of watching uh, within a week's given time. We have a near about 100 some views of these studies. Uh, we know that maybe not all views is for the whole time. They may just be a segment. But maybe you've just Watch for just a small segment tonight, and the Lord has spoken to your heart, and we hope and pray that he has, and, and that he's spoken to your heart that all these things on this earth that weigh us down, that we may understand this is a broken world, but Christ came to be able to forgive and find, uh, give us a way to be able to have eternal life. And so tonight, let us go into prayer tonight. May you bow your heads where you're at. We want to pray for you. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. Thank you for this study. Thank you that your word can be clear. Sometimes it takes time for us to read and be able to understand a little bit, but through your spirit, you're able to open up scriptures to know that without a shadow of a doubt that we can know as Christians tonight, if we've accepted you as our personal Lord and Savior tonight, it doesn't matter anything else we've done here on this life, that through the eyes of God, if we are saved, that he sees us, Lord, that you see us, Lord, through your son's blood. Thank you tonight, Lord. Be with us. Speak to hearts wherever they may be. If there's someone here tonight listening that does not know you, uh, convict their heart. Draw them to you tonight that they know that there's no way that they can attain eternal life and salvation except for through you. Uh, we encourage folks to reach out to us, Lord, and we know that's only through your power and might that you can encourage that tonight. Um, and we just love you. We want to pray for the requests spoken and unspoken. Speak to homes uh, and lives that may be broken. Fulfill them in only the way that you can. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you again tonight for joining us. We love you. Uh, we've been praying for you. Uh, we just ask that you continue to pray for the church. Uh, pray for the ministries here at the church. The, 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 the Lord's word is not going out void. Uh, we know that the Lord is doing great works here at, at our church. Um, we're excited to be a part of that. Uh, we invite you to be back with us next Sunday, Sunday morning, 10 uh, 30 a.m. is our morning service. Whether you participate live or in person or online, uh, we invite you to do so. And again, once again, next Sunday night, 5 p.m., uh, we're going to continue here in, in Mark chapter 10. Um, and we're going to talk, as we mentioned here, Christ is going to predict his death for a third time um, as we've talked. And so we, we hope that you can join us um, as we do that study next week. So once again, we love you. We're praying for you. Hope you have a great week. Um, have a great and safe week. And we'll see you next week. Thanks a lot. Take care.